Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the week ahead from August 26th until September 1st of 2024. Now you guys know I love to take a few steps back and look at the dates that we just walked out of before we dive and immerse ourselves into the energy of this week. And the reason why I love to do this is because it helps us to understand and helps me to explain why and what energy we're in right now. So even though the week is unfolding, it's a fresh start for the most part, I guess, Monday through Sunday, as far as we can call it a fresh start when we have so many planets that are currently retrograde, but that's neither here, the, here nor there. We'll talk about that a little further. Even though there's a fresh start, there's still energy that we are swimming in that will help us to understand and explain why we feel what we're feeling and what we can expect as the week continues to unfold. So go ahead and grab some coffee, grab some lemonade. That's what I have here, some water, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So as I said, there is a ton to talk about, and we are going to start with looking at the planets prior. Before we dive into the energy of the past week, I do want to say that I'm in the Halloween spirit and just feeling the energy of fall, even though I'm in the middle of Florida and it's hot and <laughs> we're still in like hurricane season. In my mind, it's fall. I do have tarot decks that I am going to be working with that reflect this fall creepy spooky vibes. I'm hoping that you guys are feeling that. I'm in a pumpkin spice kind of latte type of mood. That's just where I'm at right now. Just giving you guys a disclaimer, all of the tarot decks, oracle decks that I'm gonna be working with, you'll find them linked down below. I do have the charts pulled up in front of me and I have my notes here on my left. And we have a new format lately to help you to follow along so you can see as I'm shuffling. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that starting this week, even though this has already happened August 5th, we want to keep our eyes on the fact that Mercury is still currently retrograde. Anytime when Mercury is retrograde, we have to take a few steps back. We have to slow down significantly. We have to watch our words and, and be very careful with technology, transportation, any type of moving, moving parts. For most of us, we know this already, but it helps to remind, it helps, the reminder helps. Mercury is going to go direct August 28th, but even still, even though that's happening this week, it still has a strong tendency to muddle things. If you are traveling during this time, that is not a bad thing. It doesn't promise that transport, like your travel plans will be disrupted or chaotic or dangerous. A lot of you guys have fear, especially with um, the major planets and how they've been transitioning and how that's kind of shown up in our lives that has created like really unexpected pivots and, and deviations that for, for globally have actually been pretty life-threatening. And I know that that's not something that we love to talk about here in the astrology and spirituality community, but it is the truth and it shows up within the charts. If you are traveling during this time, you, you, you will be fine. Mercury retrograde just has a small tendency to kind of create some like little bumps, like turbulence when we're traveling and when we're on the road, but it's not anything that should stop you in any major way or derail you, especially if you find yourself traveling for work, traveling to see family, traveling to support people or traveling to, to people or situations, revisiting things of the past. Mercury retrograde is a wonderful time to work with these energies. The other thing with Mercury retrograde is communication with friends, family, relationships, job opportunities of the past. They have a tendency to recycle and to reemerge during this time. What you do with this is totally up to you. I am someone who believes in empowerment and intention and intuition, especially that of women or people who are tapping into their feminine energy very deeply. Trust yourself when it comes to any type of connections that find themselves find themselves wanting to recycle and reemerge back into your life. 
with Mercury retrograde, not just Mercury retrograde, but all the majority of the planets, nothing really does seem to be set in stone or concrete. Everything feels very temporary. I don't see this as a negative thing. I see this as something that allows us to kind of close out certain chapters or lessons so that when we move forward, we have more clarity. We've learned those lessons. I don't know if you were watching last week's video, but the world card kept showing up. And it showed up, I'm pretty sure it showed up reversed for the collective. And with that, it's like, really the message kept being like, you need to recap and reconsider like this past le these past lessons or this major theme that keeps showing up in your life before you can move forward. Even if you yourself are setting attention for a fresh start or new beginning, it's very possible that because your mind and your energy hasn't changed, that even though the situation is brand new, it won't be brand new because you're bringing the old outdated you into a situation that could have been a clean slate, a fresh start. So this is why we take time to listen to ourselves, to reconnect within ourselves and to ask our angels, guides, ancestors, <laughs> the universe to bring clarity and to strengthen our discernment so that we're not, you know, like on this Ferris wheel, just spinning around in circles and not and wondering like, why haven't things changed or why aren't things progressing? Why am I not moving forward? Or why am I in a new situation and facing the same outcome again and again? With so many planets retrograde right now, Mercury, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, retrograde, there's too much right now that is trying to work on like moving you away from the energies that inhibit you, from energies that bind you up, from things that like tricks that you always seem to kind of fall into the arms of and or maybe past patterns or things that like comfort, like ways that you comfort yourself. But there needs to be some more growth in those in those places, because even though it's comfort comfortable or even though it's comfort comforting or even though it's something that is consistent to you and always shows up to you, it doesn't mean that it's good for you. There's a lot of things that it's time for you to outgrow. These are not just outside energies that we are facing, but also internal beliefs and really questioning to the point where it really makes us all individually like vulnerable. Why we do what we do, why we feel the way that we feel, why we think that we need what we think that we need. You know what I mean? Like, and also for some of us that are facing obstacles that feel really great, like bigger than us, than us. This is an opportunity for you to embrace new help, new support, and to regain courage and conviction within yourself big time, especially because Chiron is retrograde right now. This is so much, I don't say bigger than us, but it's we're matching the depth of, of the growth that's happening around us because we are all shaping up into being individually like really powerful human beings big time when it comes to our purpose, when it comes to fulfillment, when it comes to destiny, when it comes to helping others, when it comes to helping ourselves. These are themes that the universe is really, really looking out for us. Now, those are the past dates and things that is that you should be like understanding. Like as I'm talking to you about them, you're gonna be like, yes, Jess, yes. Not only have we heard you talking about this, Jess, but I'm seeing the, those themes in my life, 100%. So you're probably most likely nodding along and saying, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Even though many of you guys are starting on new chapters, you have learned, okay, structure is something that really helps me. Structure is something that I develop for myself, not something that I wait for anybody else to give to me. When I didn't have the structure, I was lost and aimless and purposeless. And then when I created new structure with this new freedom, I realized this is what I need to be successful. This is what I need to thrive. So there's just so many wonderful ways that this energy presents itself and even though it's a temporary transit it can teach us long-term results like long-term lessons that we can use for the entirety of our lives now having said that again looking back at these past pleasant uh planets 
we'll look back and we're like, holy crap, this is really intense. <laughs> yes, it really is. You can see it in the news. You can see it on social media. You can see it when you walk down the street. You can hear it in people's conversations. I mean, looking at society and economy and the planets and space travel. Remember, I was telling you guys about that. Keep your eyes on space travel, taking the news. It really, really has. All of these trends are things that we're seeing or things that I have seen within the astrology chart. So this is to help to explain. Having said that, this week, as intense as those major transits are, and we definitely are still under the umbrella of all this energy, this week is really interesting because I'm seeing a lot of spontaneity. This is one of the reasons why I was so excited to shuffle and pull <laughs> for the energy of this week because I'm like, wow, as intense as, well, I don't even want to use the word intense, but as transformative as these planets are, it's really interesting to see the levity and the brightness and the delusion, if we can even look at this as like a positive thing that these planets bring for us this week. Partly because Venus is entering the sign of Libra that's happening August 29th big part of August 28th, Venus is going to be opposing Neptune retrograde and the 27th. I'm taking steps back. I don't know if you're seeing this, but Venus trine Uranus. There's a lot of energy pre predominantly around the energy Venus, the planet that rules beauty, aesthetic, like little like money, how we want to spend that money, attraction and feminine energy. I love the surprise and the delusion that she brings to us each individually this week. I think that when life is so serious sometimes and we are working on ourselves or we're trying to be serious about our growth and about our relationships and about the future and about our plans and about ourselves, that's all well and good. But what happens when we're just like, fuck it, <laughs> like I don't even care anymore, I'm not going to be my best self. Not that I'm encouraging, encouraging guys to be chaotic. But it's just like this feeling of like, I'm just so open. I want to have fun. I don't want to be so poised and buttoned up and have all the right answers all the time. I actually feel like I'm drifting on a cloud. I'm feeling romantic. I'm floating. You know, Mercury retrograde is doing what it's going to do anyways, transiting through uh, Leo. It's very expressive. It's very fun. It's very colorful. It's very bold. And retrograde, half the time, it doesn't even make sense. At this point, I just want to say that this energy is giving coloring outside of the box, taking all the different uh, color crayons and cray paws and uh, clay acrylic paints and all the things that you can think of and name for yourself and just creating what you feel like creating without looking at the rules or following expectations. This is more about you expressing yourself, revealing yourself and showing what you like, what you love. There is a wonderful opportunity here, Venus trying Pluto retrograde, and just the retrogrades in general, where we do want to kind of like reconnect, reassess, and reaffirm what works for you. Reflect on yourself. Why do I do this? But for the most part, there's this really lovely energy here that I'm fully supportive of, just as much as I'm supportive when we're like working on ourselves and journaling and uncovering our dream meanings, you know, where you just allow yourself to be. You allow yourself to be drawn to whatever you're drawn to. Venus rules aesthetic, beauty, and what we find attractive. So this could be you just wanting to switch up your appearance, you wanting to go back to a place that you once loved that makes you feel good about yourself. It's surrounding yourself with beautiful things and not needing to totally know why, just knowing that it makes you feel good. This has a lot of levity, and niceness to it. It's very floaty. So try to enjoy this as much as you can. For those of you guys that are very much on the dating spectrum right now where you're exploring your options or maybe wanting to reconnect or rekindle love and romance and connection with a partner, this is a wonderful time to do that as well as long as we're not being too serious or too forward and we don't have high, high heavy expectations. This is more about allowing yourself to drift off in like fantasy land and planning that crazy trip that you're just like, you know, who am I to do this? Like, I've never done this before, like meeting a stranger. I'm not encouraging you guys again to be chaotic, but like, do you to book a trip, book some travel and just jump on a plane and zip off. So it's very like 
relaxed. It's very easy. And I think that so many of us can really benefit from these energies lately because again, a lot of things have been very heavy and very intense. Now I say this and mom mode wants to kind of kick in and tell you guys to don't do anything that puts you in danger. Always keep your wits about you. Always practice common sense. Use your intuition. I trust that you're going to make good decisions when you go out into the world, but do remember to have fun as well. Okay. The other thing that I, I am seeing here that I really want you guys to keep an eye out for, and this is going to be a major theme for the coming months, is the fact that Uranus, the planet of surprise, unexpected uh, changes, pivots, and dip and like divots. Is divots a word? Deviations is going to be retrograde starting September 1st. Now, this is tough, very, very tough because Uranus retro, well, Uranus in general rules energy of surprise and things that we can't necessarily like put a pin on. It loves space, it loves freedom, it loves future. Like, it's so oriented to the future that. It doesn't really relate to the energy of what's going on in the here and now. And that's a beautiful thing, but it requires people to kind of like catch up with where Uranus's mind is, which is like, where where is Uranus right now? Like lost out in space, literally and figuratively. So with these energies, in now that's transiting through the sign of Taurus and now retrograding the sign of Taurus, not only does it increase the element of surprise and unexpected developments, but it's hitting the place that has been getting some B-O-M-B-S. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the internet anymore. We all have to censor ourselves. But there have been some serious B-O-M-Bs that have been dropping lately in the sign of Taurus. Now, regardless of your sun, moon, and rising, you really want to see what Uranus rules within or what Taurus rules within your chart because already you've seen a lot of like things shaking up in big ways. This can shift your priorities and make you reevaluate a lot of things that you weren't even expecting. It comes in the form of a sense of destabilizing you. And when you feel that shakeup, you are looking around and you're like, holy crap, what I thought was a sure thing is no longer. Now that I'm knowing this, I can't trust the ground that it was that I was originally standing on thinking that I'm safe and thinking that it's solid because anything can happen here. Now I want to at least have a plan or I want to loosen my expectations or I want to detach, learn to detach and let, let go, let God and allow the universe and the situation to unfold in the way that hopefully fingers crossed I'm trusting is for my highest and greatest good and the best interest of all. Now, Remember that with Uranus, it's not personal, it's global. It's it's like this collective energy. It's all about humanity. So it doesn't really focus so much on us in the way that we feel personally attacked. It's not like the Regina George um, from the movie Mean Girls in the Cosmos. It's more like, okay, this isn't, a, this isn't personal, but when all things are considered, when all of the collective energies are considered, even though this is what you think you want, this is actually what's going to be for the betterment of you or and all, all of mankind and humanity, but also for your future. So these are things that you want to kind of like prepare for. What this is teaching you is, again, things that you thought were a sure thing and solid. It's important that you learn how to detach, to let go, and to be open. Detaching doesn't mean that you don't have feelings, that you're not excited, that you're not hopeful, that you're not sad, or that you don't feel any type of emotion towards what's happening around you. It just means that you're allowed to feel what you feel and you give it the space to unfold in the way that you are trusting is for your highest and greatest good. And you allow it to be without trying to mold it and shape it into being something that it was or something that you see from your perspective is better for all of us and for yourself. Um, I also want to talk about like how this energy is going to impact humanity as a whole collectively. This type of transit, even though Taurus rules like goods and luxury, that can represent designer things or the finer things or luxurious things or expensive stuff. But for the most part, what Taurus really, really thrives within is good quality fill in the blank. 
So this is showing us collectively, and we're going to watch this trend unfold within our lives, this beautiful energy of simplification or less is more quality over quantity, which is something that as, as, as a collective, we're all kind of migrating away from that. A big thing that we're seeing here has a lot to do with the economy, spending, and like global recession, which as we're looking, looking at the chart, we can see it, but what's the government doing? What's the government saying? Or governments, what are they saying? They're not really quick to address this and to call it for what it is, and there's a whole, <laughs> whole explanation that I can see as I'm pulling the chart, but for the most part, as I'm looking at the chart right now, just because they're not saying it doesn't mean that it's not actually happening. But what it is doing is making every single one of us individually to prioritize living more simply, living more wholesome, and begin to put like what is truly important in the front forefront of our mind. Meanwhile, we start focusing on the simplification of our lives from slow mornings, excellent sleep, calm days or days that minimally feel more fulfilling and not depleting, not being on this whole rat race. There's this need again, talking about the idea of being detached to being present, you not being so consumed with concepts, with the internet, with what people are saying, how people are moving, what the future has, what the past held. You have now the freedom to choose what you want, the space to change your mind or to change plans. That's what Uranus now transiting through Taurus is bringing to every single one of us individually. And how we take care of ourselves, especially when it comes to beauty and aesthetic, going back to the roots, going back to simplification and trying to, to, trying to reflect or bring in and incorporate a higher quality of life, but that doesn't necessarily mean things and a lot of stuff, you know, that is just taking up space. It's very modifying like so that we are more simple and we are able to enjoy like we're not overwhelmed by the energies or things that are in our lives do keep an eye out for um, breakthroughs with your finances with spending and money you're going to be learning a lot business tends to go up and down especially if you're a small business owner or if you're working with corporations major corporations again things that we thought were a sure thing they are taking a lot of heat right now. Keep your eyes on social media. That's a whole nother story I've talked about in the past with my past videos. So make sure that you guys are subscribed if you aren't already so that you can continue to hear what's going to be happening, what we can expect globally when it comes to econ the economy, um, economics, and also uh, conflict. Think those are things that we talk about very often here on the YouTube channel. So, or just on this platform so if that's something that you're interested in and it doesn't freak you out then that's wonderful in the near future guys i really want you guys to keep an eye on the fact that we do have this beautiful new moon that's happening in the sign of scorpio september 2nd at 9 56 p.m eastern standard time again this is september 2nd so we do have some time i'll have a whole video breaking down those energies what we can expect i'm gonna have a whole video about that but i did have an extended uh, reading that I did for the last full moon. It was timed at the time of the full moon, but it really, the message still applies today. This is for those of you guys that really could use a little additional intuitive insight. You guys know when it comes to my readings, I really pour myself into those moments for you guys, like just channeling. So I'm going to leave that down below. The new moon in Scorpio, I most likely will have another channeled message, extended reading, and I will link that in the future. But for those of you guys that really missed out on the extended reading and you really could use extra, extra support, intuition, affirmation, confirmation, or clarity right now, definitely check out that video. Again, it was filmed at the start of the full moon, but the energy still applies, okay? I want to go ahead and take a break for a second and switch into the tarot. The tarot deck that I'm working with is the horror tarot. All right, my loves, so let's go ahead and dive into the tarot portion of our reading today. Please bear with me with the setup right now. I'm still working out the kinks so that you guys are able to see as I'm shuffling and pulling. I do have these cards pulled out for you. A little concerning, but we're gonna clip um, provide clarity 
so that we can see exactly what this energy is trying to teach us and show us right now. So the first card we have is Seven of Swords reversed. I did pull a clarification card and that's Seven of Pentacles reversed, followed by the World card reversed, the Sun upright, Queen of Cups, Eight of Cups upright, and the Nine of Cups reversed. What I want to tell you is for so many of us, it's time for us to go with the flow and let go to loosen up some of our expectations because having really tightly bound expectations can lead to crazy, crazy disappointment that could have been avoided. Also, I get this feeling of like not assuming something of a situation or assuming something of someone. I don't wanna say expect the best, but don't expect anything. Ask more questions than anything else. With the Seven of Swords, I just really get a strong sense that you're not able to see something or someone for who it is. And that's not a threat because sometimes people's intentions aren't so clear, but that doesn't mean that it's coming from a negative place or that they wish or want harm over you. It's just that the energy is kind of lost in translation for whatever reason. I also get a sense here with Seven of Pentacles reverse and Seven of Swords reverse. Are you speaking up? for what you truly, really, really want and need right now. You may be someone who, for some of us, we're predictable. We kind of want the same thing again and again, like that's just who we are, that's what we like. We don't like to change it up, that's how I am. But every once in a while, we start to lose interest in something or we start to lose interest in someone or our passion starts to diminish or dwindle in some way. It's worth kind of reflecting and seeing what like where might this be coming from do i need a little bit more space for myself do i need to reflect on again how i've evolved what i'm attracted to what i need or for some of you guys you may just not be in a place where you can give in the way or even receive in the way that you have in the past in the past and this is connecting me again to expectations of what people expect from you or how you're expected to show up and the way that you feel called to show up right now. There's something here. It's so funny because remember I said in the very beginning of our reading today, the world card keeps showing up and the world card reversed and here it is again showing up reversed again this week with a totally different tarot deck. So there's something here that still spirit is telling us this week that we are still learning the lesson. We're still learning how to stand up for ourselves. We're still kind of learning how to approach a difficult situation. We're still learning something important about ourselves that we may not have discovered before. It could be, again, like what makes you feel fulfilled. It's what you, what brings you happiness and joy. It could be something that, uh, like a pattern that you keep kind of reverting back to that it doesn't serve you anymore, but you don't really know a different way. Take your time as you're learning this lesson. Um, take your time as you're learning this lesson, but also, ref like, I'm seeing a lot of, um, I don't say like journaling and reflecting, but I'm seeing a lot of like, like taking a step back and kind of like, you know when, when we're hands on with things, when we're trying to fix things, when we're trying to figure things out? The, the our brains are kind of working I feel like this is for someone who needs like people here would be a really it would be good for them I don't know why I'm st stumbling on my words right now to like take a step back in the way of doing something that is fun for you doing something that brings you joy doing something that's completely unrelated to the to the goal you know of like why why am I not feeling this why does this not feel like a vibe why don't I want why am I not attracted? Why, not, why am I not passionate? Why am I not this? There's something about moving your eyes towards something else and allowing your body to relax and allowing the energy to relax that starts to reveal to you, the sun card, what is actually going on within you. Now, chances are this has a lot to do with emotions. You may just need to emotionally feel safe. You may need some time for yourself, Queen of Cups, even though she's very giving, very soft, very nurturing, she's still, even in the upright position, she knows who she is emotionally and takes care of her emotional needs so that she doesn't find herself depleting herself 
is there something or a situation in your life where you realize I could really benefit from taking a vacation or I can really benefit from pulling back because a part of me feels if I continue in this way, I'm going to be disconnected from myself. I'm going to be dissociated. I'm going to be saying yes to things that I don't want to say. For many of you guys, there's something here tangible that can be done that will emotionally take, I don't want to say a burden off of your shoulders, but something that you need to make you feel more relaxed in this season, more happy, more fulfilled. So that's something to look out for. It's interesting that the Nine of Cups is reversed. Now, Nine of Cups shows us that, okay, why are sometimes when this card shows up, there's this energy of like, well, why aren't you grateful? You have all of these things. I'm happy. Why can't you be happy? Like, why can't we all be happy? That's not really fair to the person who's feeling a little unfulfilled right now because yes, of course they want to be happy. Of course they want things to be flowing seamless and easy and effortless, but this person may need a little extra time to kind of take a vacation to pull away and to just be to themselves or be with family or whatever their needs are. And that's for them to decide. That's for them to uncode. That's for them to figure out. That's for them to ask that question within themselves. It's not for us to say, everything is great and wonderful and dandy in your life. Why can't you just fill in the blank? So for some of you guys, it's really, it really does there's this need to shine a light on your happiness, your joy, your fulfillment. It doesn't feel heavy though. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes where you're just like, I just, it just feels so like sometimes the energies are just so like heavy and you're just like, I am completely unfulfilled. It just feels like you just need a little pivot. Like you just need to move in a different direction. It could be like taking two days off and ordering food for yourself and not answering your phone or going on a girl's trip or going on a girl's vacation. This may not necessarily be you too. Remember that there's other people that are under these energies as well. So this may be a friend that or someone here that you're seeing that you may see them kind of like pulling away for a little bit. Don't take it personally. It's again this this expectation of just like, well, we always see you in this way. We always see you smiling or we always see you in this one lens. And then because that person or because you are kind of like bicycle, like bike, bicycling through something, you know what I mean? Just kind of pedaling your way through something right now. It doesn't need to be a big thing. It's just you feeling and sensing like I need a little, I need a little extra or I need a little less. That's what it is that I'm seeing here. And what's interesting is the eight of cups is the next card to show up. This is where you decide, okay, I would like to walk away. This doesn't mean that you're separating yourself from a relationship or saying goodbye forever. It just means like some of you guys are literally running a bath this week and relaxing in it. Some of you guys are saying, I'm going to take a little extra time off. Some of you guys are saying, okay, I'm, I'm getting on that plane. There's something here about you being definitive about what you want and see and what you feel will make you feel good this week moving forward which makes a lot of sense when we when we think about venus's transit through through um venus's transit through the charts this week remember venus trying uranus it's spontaneous it's fun it's open venus opposing neptune retrograde for a lot of you guys there's something that may feel a little off or a little misty foggy within you that you're just like I don't know what it is I can't quite put my finger on it it's not that serious but I could feel better or this would be better if fill in the blank that's something also for some of you guys you might actually be like I could just use it's funny because she has a drink right here um it's like pouring yourself a glass of wine and just like I could just use a glass of wine and to sit in the backyard looking at the stars for the next three days every night after work I just need that this is going to help you especially with mercury turning direct in the sign of Leo on the 28th as well to give you just a little bit more clarity into what you want what you're attracted to and what's going on within you again I don't see this as anything big like this huge meltdown if anything you've already felt that meltdown with all the, the planets retrograde currently it's just giving you a little bit more extra time to kind of reflect, to reconsider, and to come back to your senses a little bit and what feels good for you. 
The Eight of Cups is the card of walking away, but I don't see this as a negative thing at all or even a difficult thing. For a lot of you guys, most of you guys, it's just you being in a place of peace and like extra fulfillment and extra joy and extra support. It could be you sneaking away from the job to get your hair and your nails done, you know? Um, yeah, that's funny because the next card to jump out is the Moose card connecting to awakening and transcendence. Then we have forgiveness, sacrifice. This has a lot to do with prayer. Then we have diplomacy and kindness. That's really interesting. Diplomacy and kindness because I see this as expectations. That's what, that which is expected of us. Like, this is the way that things have always been to harmonize and balance the collective out, which is all fine and good and wonderful. But like, if everyone else is happy and you're kind of like needing, you're kind of feeling like you could benefit a little bit more, like you could, you need something too. Just because the whole community is happy and just because no one else is complaining, it doesn't mean that you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to sacrifice my happiness for the greater good. This is where it's important for you to kind of call out or to step away for the sake of, I'm a part of the greater good. So my happiness and my contentment and my calmness should be factored in. Now, for some of you guys, this is that's going to be the difficult part is when you realize what's missing or when you realize what you want and need, you're going to have to speak up for it. And again, that's where it's like, that's that, that can be the hard part because again, if there's other people that are factored in, a boss, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, f friends, family, a doctor, whoever, where you're just like, you know, I know that we've been doing it this way this entire time, but I realized like it is working, but like for me, I know it could be better. And when I sat with myself and I walked away, I realized and I reflected and I would like a little bit more of this or I would like a little less of this. If it kind of shakes things up, then so be it. So be it. But when it comes to diplomacy and kindness, don't forget that Venus is also, I don't know if I said this, but she's going to be entering into the sign of Libra later on this week. And when she enters into the sign of when she enters in the sign of Libra, that's August 29th, there's this really interesting tendency that we all kind of like tap into of like people pleasing or saying, going along with things for the sake of the collective, so to speak. And we have to remember, I am a big part of the collective and my happiness and my joy should be factored in. And if I have to separate myself from the, the, general theme of things so that I can gain a little bit more confidence or courage to speak up or to even gain more clarity and what it is that I want and need for myself, then so be it. Also this week, the vertex, Mars and the vertex are directly conjunct in the sign of Gemini. And this is a wonderful time to remind ourselves that there's so many different options and things that we can explore that can make us look non-committal, but it's providing answers to questions that our insides are asking. So as deep as some of these transits are, can you guys also see the levity and the brightness and the lightness that they bring into our lives? There's this really nice delicate balance of like permission that the universe gives us to kind of uh, sep like separate, to pull away for a second in whatever way that looks like for us. For the sake to give us, like we have the peace and tranquility card here, this little turtle. Um, for the sake of giving us um, literally that, some tranquility, some peace, some understanding, some quiet. Not to the point where you're like, if of course you could be at like a spa or something, but like it's like a spa within your body where you're just like, I am good. Everything is right with my soul. Because again, you guys, I just really feel like someone here needs to hear that like your happiness really matters and if you're someone who is a people pleaser and you're constantly showing up you know for others and doing what's in what everyone else is asking of you because that makes you happy because that makes you joyful this is one of those times where it's like watch the kids I'm gonna go for a walk I'm gonna do this I'm gonna take care of myself you know everyone everyone has different needs right now so let's go ahead and I don't say indulge but allow ourselves to have that because it is important. Now the next 
cards that I want to work with. It's interesting. It's Wisdom of the House of Night. And this card is not about indulging, but now that I think about it, it, it does always remind me of like the pleasures of human, like humanness, like the rawness of humanness. And it's funny that I chose this deck today and I think it's a perfect reflection of this reading right now. Look at that, you have the High Priestess of Water again. So this represents oftentimes the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Cups, talking about our emotions, our feelings, and about it, like the fulfillment, the feeling, the sense of fulfillment. We don't wanna wait until we're drained, until we're barren, until we're frustrated, annoyed, used, abused, discarded, to have a revelation or have a realization, I need more than what I've currently been given. We don't wanna wait for that. The Queen of Cups in both of these decks is upright. This means that she is taking those steps today, all right? They're already in the works in order to fill her cup up. And she is not asking for permission. She's not waiting for anyone else to do it for her. She's taking the steps herself, Eight of Cups. She's walking in that direction in the near future to make sure that she is good so that she's solid. That's something that you can be doing for yourself as well. What does that look like for you? Then we have the warrior card showing up next, which has a lot to do with masculine energy and that fight. So really interesting that this card is showing up. Some of you guys may have a battle within yourself, but you may be battling with someone or choosing not to battle with someone who is battling within themselves, having their own kind of inner fights and own kind of inner demons. This is where you say to yourself, I love you, I like you, or we're a team or whatever the case is, but that is not my battle to fight. That's for you to figure out. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be here working on myself and figuring out what I gotta figure out over here. And that shouldn't be a problem. Now let's look at the last card that we have here. We have Risk, and that was reversed. And at the bottom of the deck, we actually have the card Letting Go, which is connecting me to the World card that was showing up, as well as the Eight of Cups. And the Risk card, remember that sometimes when we speak up for ourselves or when we change even a minor detail, right? Like any type of minor change in our lives or minor pivot in our lives that even is for our highest and greatest good that we know is healthy, that we know is good, it can feel like a risk. It can feel like, oh my God, now what? Or it can come at a quote unquote cost of what you fear or what you may lose, what you fear you may lose when you put yourself in a good place that you need to. <laughs> is there a better way of saying that? Probably. But there oftentimes when you have to do what's in your best interest, not everybody's going to love it because that means that you're not doing what was in their best interest. So um, for many of you guys, the energy feels good. You might just be getting away and spending time with your friends and like building a picnic and forgetting the cares of the world for a little bit. You have seven, seven more days where you can do that and then you can buckle down a little further in the near future. So if you love this reading, definitely, definitely um, look into Bahati Love Notes. It's the extended exclusive readings that I put out for a small group throughout the month. I'll leave a coupon code down below so you can use that to sign up. If you have like Bahati Love Notes is not your thing or you need additional support, check out that extended reading, that extended message. I did it last week or around the time of the full moon. It was the day of the full moon, but I didn't realize that it wasn't, that it's not just the full moon that it's covering. It's actually covering us still now. It was very timeless. It's when you need to hear it and you'll know because you can feel it in your spirit that this is, you need a little extra support. You need a little extra confirmation or clarity. The links for that will be down below. I'll let you choose whoever's meant to be listening to that or find that that's gonna be there for you. Everyone else, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Make sure that you are subscribed, even if you thought that you're a past subscriber or even following me on Instagram. Like I said, social media is going through it right now. It's not just my social media. It's all over the world. People 
content creators, if that's what you want to call them, us, me, have been talking about it for the longest time. I'm seeing it where social media platforms are just really, they're just taking hits and they've been unsubscribing, blocking things, just random stuff. It's more of a reflection of the chaos that's going on behind the scenes, big business with them, than us who are showing up consistently. So I'm taking it with a grain of salt because at the, at the end of the day, I set so much intention that who I'm supposed to talk to and who I'm supposed to work with and who's supposed to hear me does. It hasn't like fall, fell on me, like it hasn't been bad so far. So I, or worked against me, it's always protected me, my work, my messages, my space. And why would it stop now? So just make sure that again, if you are someone who loves my content and loves what it is that I do and loves my authenticity, my messages and integrity, just make sure that you are still subscribed because they're pushing people off, you know, even on Instagram too. Um, I have two Instagrams. One is Bahati Life, B as in boy, E H A T as in tiger, I L I F as in Franklin, E. And that's my work one, intuitive messages, etc., etc. And then I also have my personal, which is me, Jessica X Alexandria. And those are the only two accounts that I really have next to Queen Bee Homestead, but that's a whole other story. Be, be mindful of imposters because they're out there. Um, and I will link my, my socials down below so you'll know definitely that it's me. I also don't reach out to people and offer them readings. I can't believe that that's still happening in 2024, but here we are. Um, anything that I offer, you would have to come to me and it would come directly from me. So you will see at Bahati, like info at BahatiLife.com, period. Okay, so until then, you guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. For those of you guys that are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes here next, we're going to be doing a whole Halloween reading. And for those of you guys that are going to be in the extended, I'll see you guys shortly. That link is down below. And until then, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.